just to give an example from an offensive perspective, I've said this for years, but um, you get into a goal line situation on offense, and you really need in a game, you really need about two plays. Well, as a coach, you kind of feel insecure about that. Maybe we need five plays. Maybe there's seven plays. So, you know, rather than just kind of trusting that let's go with two plays, you go with the five plays, and maybe you learn three plays that you really don't need. So I think that's a lot of it there, is, is just trying to make that analogy of saying, OK, maybe instead of having three fronts for this, this uh, uh, formation or this personnel group, you, get, you have two. Maybe instead of having four coverages, you have two. Uh, you know, you just ratchet it down a little bit so that a person can comprehend it a little bit more. Is Seamless probably enough to get involved? We'll see. We'll see how he, how he does, yeah. Don't know that yet. The uh, <coughs> extra days off help at all, uh, getting over the commute a lot? Uh, hard to say. Um, you know, again, we tried on, on Saturday, learned from it, and came back in and practiced hard Sunday morning and pushed on and got going. So how much of that lingers, you never really know. I don't think there's a huge problem because I think most of the guys were pretty much past it, you know, come Sunday. So I don't think it was a problem. What are the differences that you see in the two quarterbacks that Wyoming has not been able to change this season? Uh, I think they're trying to find a little bit of a sweet spot there, and I think those guys are pretty close. I don't know how much you know, differently they are. Um, maybe a little bit of our situation with uh, Tyler and Cody last year. Um, not not hugely different. I think they're just trying to find that sweet spot. Yeah, what do you think uh, a win would mean to Eric Dillon? <laughs> well, I really, I don't, I don't think that's why you should play. I don't think that's why you should compete. I mean, um, and would he be happy? I'm sure he would, but I'd hope he'd be just as happy with a win over Toledo or Colorado State. I mean, I don't, I don't buy into that. That's the theory is you're, you're waiting for some sort of revenge factor, whatever it may be. No, I don't get into that. Get Penelope back for Cody. I mean, would it be healthy and everything? No, he's fine. Yeah. No, we won't. Um, so we've actually put a lot on him in both games. We put a lot on him. Dan, I don't think anybody saw this coming. It's now a two-star. How do you handle the shock value, maybe with players, maybe with your staff, and maybe even with yourself? Uh, you just... Again, you just you just keep going, and and I can I relate it to the other side. I know we haven't had the, the winning streak, but you know you guys remember after the Oklahoma game, I wasn't shocked about that. I wasn't. I wasn't shocked that we beat Oklahoma. So, you know, as a coach, I think you're always hanging in the middle there, knowing that it's capable of things going both ways. And hey, certain segments of the population are always going to get on one end of the spectrum or the other about what happens, but. Hey, every coach, you win, you redial, you lose, you redial. That's just how it has to go, no matter what the situation is. I mean, as a coach, you've been through it before, so it's easy, I mean, it's easier for you to redial. But 18, 19, 20-year-old players, is it, do you have to do something to convince them that they still have the talent? I think if your I think if your personality and your culture and your philosophy was to live in an exuberant manner like that. That would probably be hard, but it's not. We don't. We're very sort of methodical about how we go about business and addressing things and looking at things and looking at it as a process versus a, you know, the end all game. And so I don't think it's a huge issue for those guys. I really don't. Do you find people are offering you more advice when you go to coffee and stuff like that? Like out a little bit. <laughs> well, first off, if you know football coach, you don't get out a lot, so uh, that doesn't always always happen. There's. Oh yeah, there's there's plenty of advices. There's, you know, you guys are in that boat. So uh, there, there's lots of free advice out there. This is probably the most criticism or under fire maybe you've been. Have you gotten any advice from colleagues or friends in the business? Uh, yeah. Again, it's um, coaches that are in it and they know you. You you do, you do what you believe in and you hang in there and you keep plugging away and you know in the end the thing cracks it does and it cracks for everybody and that's the uh, it's it's interesting uh, you know Coach Riddle has got a buddy that coaches with the Giants you know Giants went 0 and 2 and 07 and what did all of you say? Let's fire the coach. They won the Super Bowl. 
I mean, there's a ton of those stories out there, but nobody likes those stories. Nobody recounts those stories. Nobody publishes those stories because people don't like those stories. That doesn't create conflama. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't get the juices flowing. But there's, you know, it, whether it's the Arizona Cardinals last year, I mean, you just every, every year you can, every year those things happen. We've already talked a little bit about in, in Colorado history how, you know, Coach Mack's team went 0-4 to start the season. Went to, the, went to the conference championship but all those stories are out there but nobody wants that nobody everybody wants to you know to to live in the world of drama and hype and and all of that so uh, but coaches that have been through it every coach has gone through it everybody every coach knows and so you hang in there and you keep doing your deal and you get better at what you're doing and you keep plugging and eventually the thing cracks it's it always does I'm always secure. I'm always secure. This, you know, I'm not, whether you approve of me or disapprove of me, really doesn't affect my self-esteem. Really doesn't. And um, I know this, my boss is sitting over here, we're doing things right by the kids, we're doing things right by the school, we're doing things right football-wise too. So uh, you guys are not in the bowels of our program every day and you don't you don't see all the little things that go on. You don't understand all that. And that, that's okay and understand part of that. But we're doing things the way you're supposed to do them. I know that. As a football team, in the weight room, in academics, discipline-wise, and, you know, in the structure of where we are and who we are right at the University of Colorado, I have 100% confidence in that, 100% confidence. And, but, you know, you can't, you have to control what you can control. And... I know we're doing that.